What's up, guys? Matt Brown here for the lines.com, playpicks.com. Going to talk to you about Monday night football between the Seahawks and the Eagles before we get going. As always, please hit that subscribe button. Really do appreciate the support. Watch along in the video. We're going to do some giveaways in this video as well. So a chance for you to win yourself an Amazon gift card. Shipped out a couple of those last night. So um, watch along. Also, give us a thumbs up on this video and let us know in the comments how you are going to play this game. You can see right here, full written breakdown over at the lines if you want to take a look at this. As we sit right now, over at DraftKings, six and a half in favor of the Seahawks. On the road over at the Eagles, a total of 49, 295 and 250 on the money line. Over here at, um, over here at FanDuel, six and a half, 48 and a half. So a half point difference here, 270, 220. If we are looking over here at MGM, six and a half, 48 and a half. So the half point uh, over here as well, 264, 225 on the money line. And here at points bet, if we take a look, they are sitting at six and a half as well, uh, 49 on the total. So 249s, 248 and a half. Everybody, though, sitting at six and a half, there is a little bit of juice um, over at a couple of the different places whenever we get going. I'll scroll here if you want to read along. Um, Seahawks, as you would imagine, uh, pretty efficient net yards per play. Uh, they're 13th. So they're, you know, they're in the upper kind of the upper third, almost of the league. Uh, when it comes to that Eagles net yards per play, actually at 19th is not as bad as you would think. They are in fact, though, 30th in turnover differential. A lot of that has to do with Carson Wentz. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. As far as the injury report goes, um, Lane Johnson out for the season for the Eagles. Jason Peters is questionable for this game. The, you know, obviously Lane Johnson being gone if Peters was out as well would be not good for that offensive line. Um, on the Seahawks, they actually get good news. So Chris Carson is going to be back for them. Ethan Pochich is their um, center. He is going to be back as well. And then Shaq Griffin, uh, their, their best corner. Look, hadn't played all that great so far this year, but still he, he, is, he has certainly played under expectation this year. He is going to be back for them as well. So, better injury news for the Seahawks than it is for the uh than it is for the Eagles. Let's talk about the uh, let's start with the offense here. Seahawks offense, I don't think I need to tell you. I mean, look, pass offense, fourth overall DVOA, rush offense, eighth overall DVOA. You look at their yards per play, it is fourth in the league. Um they've done really everything well on offense from a passing standpoint. Running, you know, Rushing has been all right for them. They were much more efficient with that when Chris Carson was in the lineup earlier in the season. Again, he is back this week. Is he 100%? How many snaps will he get? We'll see. Um, Carlos Hyde is still in the mix there. But um, definitely a, a, a bump up for them, especially out of the pass game, because Chris Carson actually, if you look back at those, those box scores from when Chris Carson was in earlier in the season, he was catching balls out of the backfield, kind of taking a little bit of the pressure off of Russell Wilson whenever he was getting rushed. He was able to kind of dump off and check down. And then that kind of went away whenever Chris Carson left. And so at least it adds that element back into the game for him there uh, as well. Scroll a little bit for you there. Um, on the Eagles offensive side of the ball, I don't think I need to tell you guys, especially if you're an Eagles fan, it's, it's been rough, you know. Um, look, Carson Wentz has been sacked. 40 times he's fumbled 10 times he's thrown 14 interceptions but that offensive line is 32nd dead last in the league in sack rate allowed and Carson Wentz has not been able to handle the pressure at all so it is a combination of a bad offensive line that's given a, a ton of sacks with bad and po really poor decision making that Carson Wentz has been making as well throughout the course of the season their yards per play 28th in the league you know Pass offense, 30th DVOA in the league. Um, Carson Wentz has thrown multiple interceptions in six of 10 games so far this year. I mean, it's just not good. That is really, really, really bad. Um, on the defensive side of the ball, and I'll flip over and just let you kind of look at some of these other things that you can find on the, on the pages there at the sports books. On the defensive side of the ball, look, if you have, unless you've been living under a rock, the Seattle secondary has been not historically bad, but it has been horribly 
bad. One of the easiest teams to pass on in all the NFL. They're giving up 343 yards a game through the air. Now, some of that has to do with the fact that teams have been falling behind, especially earlier in the season, were falling behind to the Seahawks. And so they just had to abandon the run and throw the ball the whole time. The other thing is, is because this defense is actually way better, way, way, way better against the run than it is against the pass. Their run defense is actually eighth overall DVOA. So they are actually, so they're a, a pass funnel defense, right? You can't run on them, but you can throw all day on them. And so that is, you know, PFF has them at fourth overall run defense in the league. But then you look at their passing stats and it's, you know, 27th DVOA, 28th uh, pass rush, 24th coverage grade. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's obvious how you attack this team. And, you know, one of the things we'll talk about when we look at the props, this team, because of the way that they go about playing defense, because they're so good against the run and bad against the pass, and, and they funnel so many passing attempts, they're facing over 44 pass attempts a game on average so far this year. Now, will the Eagles get there? Don't really know, um, but it's something we're going to look at whenever we get to that. On the Eagles defensive side of things, um, on the e Eagles defensive side of things, look, pass rush has been great. Number one overall, according to Pro Football Focus, actually, has been really, really good. Um, the the rush defense, middle of the pack. The defense has actually played fairly well. I mean, the rush defense has only given up 3.42 yards per carry. I mean, that is nothing. So the rush defense for this team has actually been really good as well. Third in sack percentage, second in sacks per game. I mean, like they, they've been they've been good, which has probably kept these this team from getting embarrassed because of how uh, bad the how bad the uh, offense has been. But wideouts are having a real tough time against them for whatever reason. Coverage grade isn't all that great according to Pro Football Focus, but they've allowed the seventh fewest yards to wide receivers uh, so far this year. So it's um, it, it's certainly been much better on the defensive side of the ball than it has been for the on the offensive side of the ball for this Eagles team. All right, so let's take a look here at. Um, Let's take a look here at some player prop. Actually, let's take a look at the total first. Okay. So let's make a case for the over. And if we wanted to play the over, of course, we would head over to, let's see. We'd head over to MGM, although that's juiced as well. So it depends on how much you care about that half point um, and how much you care about paying the five cents of juice. Over of 48 and a half. I mean, the case for the over here is pretty simple. This Seahawks offense kind of finds what they lacked the last couple of weeks and gets back to just rolling. Now, this seems to be a good spot to do such a thing. Uh, and they get back, and they score majority of the points to get you there anyway. I mean, this team was scoring over 30 points a game in the first half of the season. So you're not asking very much out of the Eagles to get to the over in this thing. The other thing is, we just told you about this. Carson Wentz has fumbled 10 times. He's thrown 14 picks. Short fields, defensive scores, strip sacks, all of those things are very much in play with Carson Wentz under center. So this is something we're going to have to really take into consideration here if, if you're leaning towards the under because um, nothing kills an under like a defensive score. Nothing kills an under like a strip sack at the 15-yard line or whatever it might be, you know, stuff like that. Unti like, like horrible picks, you know, deep in territory that, that give the team easy chance to score. I mean, it's just, it's a, it's an under killer, you know, so, and Carson Wentz is incredibly injury prone. I mean, uh, uh, turnover prone. Now over here, if we wanted to play the under, under 49, we would do that at DraftKings. Um, or I guess you could do it at points bet if you wanted to. Um, oh no, it's juiced over here. Never mind. We'll do that at, at DraftKings. Oh, uh, the under 49. This is pretty simple as well. This offense has been pathetic for the Eagles. As, and as bad as the secondary has been for the and as bad as the secondary has been for the Seahawks, they do get Shaq Griffin back. They got Jamal Adams back as well, who's going to help in the pass rush. Can the Eagles even take advantage of how bad this defense has been throwing the you know in, in pass coverage? Now look, you're not going to be able to run on them. It's kind of the same thing. Both of these teams you can't run on them, right? So they're not going to be able to rely on Miles Sanders to to get a bunch done on the ground. So it's going to be throwing the ball. And can they get a success? Can Carson Wentz get success throwing the ball against one of the worst secondaries in the league, if not the worst secondary in the league? 
And that's going to be the question you're going to have to ask yourself if you're going to be able to trust an under here, you know? And if you think the answer is no, then you're, you're going to play the under all day, right? Because, I mean, I, look, as, as much success as we think the Seahawks might have in this game, they're not going to score 50, you know? They're not going to score probably even 42, maybe a low 30s, mid 30s. So if you think the Eagles have no success whatsoever, then you're going to play the under. Um, me for the total, I um, a lot of unknowns for me. I don't think I'm going to be playing the total um, in this game, to be perfectly honest with you. There is just, uh, because of the unknown factor, and that turnover factor, I know you can't predict turnovers, right? But it's almost like you can predict turnovers with Carson Wentz this year. And so, given those factors, it's just hard for me to play anything but the over. It would be an over or pass for me. That's what I should say. It would be an over or pass for me on this game. Um, I don't think I could stomach the under knowing that, you know, as, as bad as Carson Wentz has been this year. Let's look at some player props here, and there are a few that I'm actually really uh, interested in. So let's da head down here to – well, we'll start right here at the passing yards because this is always popular. Just so you know, I have Carson Wentz right on this number, so there's nothing at else. I do have Russell, Russell Wilson a little under 287.5, but nothing that would trigger a play for me. I have him in like the high 270s. Just want to give you at least that information. Um, you know, if you were leaning one way or the other, I do have him a little under that, but not enough to trigger a play for me. I have him kind of like at 278, 279. So, um, yeah, not a, not a big enough anything there for me. Touchdown passes, though, however, we did we do expect the, the Seahawks to score. We do expect them to um, probably do it through the air because, again, Eagles rush defense, pretty good. So over two and a half touchdown passes for Carson, for uh, Russell Wilson at plus 160. So the plus 160 comes out to, you can change this into percentage probability, right? So that comes out to about 38%. So do you think that Russell Wilson throws for three touchdowns in this game more than a third of the time? More than a little over a third of the time. Um, if that's the answer for you, then the answer is going to be over here. I'm going to play it because I think they... Um, I think they score points in this game, and I think, again, I think it happens more often. I think it happens at least every other time that this game goes down, and with the odds that I'm being given, then that makes it a good bet for me. You know, I think it happens 50% of the time. This odds implies, the, the plus 160 implies it only happens 38% of the time. So um, I'll play the over on this right here because I think every other, if this game's played a thousand times, every other time Russell Wilson throws for three touchdowns, in my opinion with the way that their offense is geared this year and the way that the Eagles defense funnels everything. Uh, rushing yards, let's go to Russell Wilson here at 27 and a half. It is over. Let's see if we can find any better price anywhere for that. Um, it's 20, so it's one yard up, but then there's a little bit of juice right there. If we head to the player props at MGM, see if we can find some rushing yards for... Russell Wilson, uh, it's juiced to the over as well. So, um, but not near as bad. So it's 130 over here, and it is only 115 over here at MGM. So that's where we would want to go with all this. So Russell Wilson's averaging about 37 rushing yards per game this year. And for whatever reason, the Eagles give up a ton of rushing yards to quarterbacks. They're actually second to last in the league so far this year in giving up rushing yards two quarterbacks and so we know Russell Wilson is not scared at all to tuck it run it if he needs to get a first down he goes and does that as well so I'm gonna have the over of the 27 and a half and again bet MGM has the least amount of juice if you want to get it there I guess we could check points bet and see if they do have it for let's see rushing rushing yards Russell Wilson nope the overs at 130 over here so MGM's a place for that one. Um, I also like I also like Carson Wentz over, but it does not look like DraftKings is posting it. Let's see if we can find it. Okay, so um, fourteen and a half on Wentz on the over, um, especially at the plus money. Because I have it actually at 17, so not very much of an edge. But again, 
we're getting the plus money on the over. So even though this is just not an, a huge edge for us, the fact that we're getting the, um, the, the plus money here is pretty nice. Now, listen, here's one of the things with these Wentz props, and this is something you know we need to, uh, we need to talk about here, and that is the, uh, that is the fact that they say Jalen Hurts is going to play more in this game. And so if Jalen Hurts does play more in this game, all of the over, any over prop for Wentz loses a ton of equity and then, and then you you know you'd want to be on the unders on these things. So that's the other thing like whenever we look at pass attempts, right? I told you that the you know it's sitting at 34 and a half and we're we're getting plus 140 on this. And I told you that the the Seahawks give up 40 nearly 44, I can get you the the exact number here. Um 44.5 is the average pass attempts per game that they face. But the problem is, is and it seems like so we should smash the over on wins, but the problem is, is what if Hertz actually plays a significant amount of time? You know, I am willing to assume that risk, but I don't want you, if you're not willing to assume that risk, then I don't want you to, you know, but I'm just, just saying I have a lean to the over on the pass attempts because they're not going to find any success on the ground. He's going to have to throw a ton, and it's just an offense that already gives up a ton of pass attempts as it is already every game anyway, right, on Carson Wentz. I mean, for Carson Wentz. So, you know, the plus 140 for me, I'll take it. But what if Jalen Hurts comes in and ends up playing, you know, full series, even though they don't think that's necessarily going to be the case? What if he does? And that's that's the case. It just it crushes these type of bets. So um, just something to just something to think about. Wentz does, though, just so you know, this 34 and a half, he does have 35 or more pass attempts in eight of 10 games this year. Um, it's really just a Jalen Hurts factor that is, is, uh, that is kind of keeping me and check on that one just a little bit. So something that we're going to uh, maybe throughout the day, we can get a little bit more clarity on, uh, on how much wins, uh, how much uh, Hertz is actually going to play in this game. I'm going to have an anytime score on Tyler Lockett. Again, if I have, if I think Russell Wilson is going to throw for three touchdown passes, then, you know, who are they going to go to one most likely to lock it. So I'm going to have an anytime score on him correlating these plays, right guys. I'm like correlating the, I think the Seahawks, we'll talk about that, but I think the Seahawks are going to win the game. If that's the case, the Eagles are trailing. They're going to throw more over the pat over pass attempts. I mean, you kind of get what I, where I'm, where I'm getting at with, with all this. And if I think that Russell Wilson's going to throw for three touchdown passes, then the correlated play would be one of his receivers, obviously. So I'm going to take an anytime score for Tyler Lockett as well on this um if i think that they are going to be trailing also then i'm going to play over on i think jalen rager and this is just a gut feeling here guys my number actually only has him at 49 yards so it's not a big advantage at all but this is more of a gut feeling they're trailing and with them with them trailing they're going to have to throw more hence the pass attempts hence all the different things like that also uh, Jalen Rager, the more he is, you know, the every week that he's out there, he's been more and more a factor in this offense. He's been more and more of uh, of a target out there. And so uh, I do like him over the 47 and a half. And then I, with that, I also think Goddard is going to be able to get not necessarily yardage, but receptions. And they're only allowed, they only have it listed over here at, um, at FanDuel. So we're going to have to look at total receptions right here for Dallas Goddard. And I like, oh shoot, that has gotten juiced since I looked at it a little bit ago. Um, but the over on three and a half for Goddard, it's juiced to 146. So really just depends on what kind of where you are with with the comfortability of playing that. Dang, man, that got juiced up real quick. So when I looked at this about two hours ago. So um anyhow, those are the uh those are the props I'm going to be playing tonight, guys. And then as far as the side goes, um, I am – I already have a ticket at five and a half for the Eagles – I mean, for the Seahawks. This went um, – this moved to six and a half. Um, look, there is a couple of different ways you can go about this. It's still under a touchdown, though getting through that six is definitely something I don't like near as much. Um Will there be late money on the Eagles that might get this thing back to a flat six? If so, I mean, you can see right here, if you want the six and a half at FanDuel, it's juiced to 118. So it could get back to the flat six. If that's the case, much better play on the Seahawks at the flat six than it is than it is on the six and a half. So, 
you know, look at that. I don't. I mean, it's not going to run away from you if you want the Seahawks. So if anything, hold out and see if you can get the flat six on that thing. Of course, the other way you could go about playing this is uh, the same. You know, we do the we talk about the same game teasers. You know that I know a lot of people like to do on these island games. So you could basically take the Seahawks down to a pick them. It'd be a, they'd be half point favorites, right? And so all they have to do is just win the game. And then you go over or under whichever you want to on the total here. Or you could tie it into tomorrow night's game between the Ravens and the Steelers if you wanted to go that route, perhaps. Um, again, I think there'll be some decent a decent amount of points here. I don't think the Eagles are going to get completely shut out. The defense has been bad enough for the uh, Seahawks. So my if I was doing the same game teaser, I would go Seahawks and over on that. Get it down to a pick them here and then down to... Well, I guess you could do it over here at the where it's 48 and a half, right? So you can get it down to 42 and a half and, uh, and basically a pick them there on that. So um, those are the props. I'm a little more prop heavy in this, um, in this one today than I normally am. I just like a lot of the opportunities here. And then, uh, again, I already have a five and a half ticket on the Seahawks. That's not, that number's not available anymore. So I just want to let you know how I would play it if it was sitting at six and a half. It gets to the flat six. That's when I would come in on the Seahawks. If not... I mean, look, or or both, whatever, right? If you want to do the same game teaser to get it down to just a pick and then at 42 and a half on the over, uh, I think it's a play that you could look at as well. Full written breakdown over here on the lines if you want to take a look at this. And of course, this new little, um, this new little player prop tool here, you can see um, how this all goes. It's pretty awesome. So, you know, Russell, you just type in a name, Russell Wilson, boom. And then it comes and it just shows you all the different places you can get the best props on him. So uh, definitely take advantage of that. All you do up here, NFL, and then week 12, and then hit Monday Night Football right there. So um, pretty awesome little tool for that. And, of course, we mentioned click on your state, have multiple sports books. You saw some bets aren't even available. Some of these other ones, you get different numbers and all that. So uh, take advantage of that as well. Leave the exact score in the comments below. So you'll put Seahawks 85. Eagles 81. If you get it exactly right, we'll ship you an Amazon gift card. Of course, has to be in before the game kicks off. Also have to be a subscriber and you also have to like the video. So be sure and do all of those things. Really do appreciate the support here, guys, and good luck on all your bets here on Monday Night Football.